Uh, good afternoon, folks. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to thank you and appreciate Knowledge Graph team for giving us this opportunity to present our journey and learning today. Uh, my name is Amit Jere, and I'm the Vice President of Engineering at Intuit, and I lead Intuit's Customer Identity Access Management and C360 platform capabilities, which are part of the overall Intuit platform. Uh, Gautam, would you like to quickly introduce uh, yourself? Sure. Uh, uh, myself, like uh, Gautam Gupta, group manager at Intuit, primarily working in the knowledge graph and data engineering technologies for like uh, more than like 20 years. And uh, this talk, I'm trying to share like the learning that I have developed over the time. So that's a thing. And feel free to connect me on my LinkedIn. Yeah. Okay, so right on. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, Intuit's mission is uh, it's pretty crisp. Uh, we are a purpose-driven and a value-driven global technology platform company, a mission to power the pros prosperity around the world. And what we mean by that is with the innovative products that we have like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, Credit Karma, MailChimp, we help millions of consumers, small business, and self-employed customers overcome their most financial important challenges, which are kind of like pretty near and dear to them. Uh, moving on to the next slides, really the scale and then the gamut of customers and businesses that we serve across the globe is, uh, it's all about 150 million plus customers globally. Again, segmented across small business, self-employed and consumer space, as I was saying earlier. Uh, through the Intuit platform that powers the multiple through multiple flagship products. And then the it's truly a world class scale wherein the platform enables hundreds of billions of money movement uh, with the highest possible accuracy, payroll for about 16 million plus customers, 50 plus million customers across uh, North America actually use TurboTax to file their taxes, uh, 100 million customers with our latest acquisition with Credit Karma manage their financial life through Intuit and Credit Karma offerings. And then with the uh, recent acquisition with MailChimp and then our flagship offering, eight plus million small business owners across the globe trust QuickBooks to manage their accounting and fin uh, finances. So that's kind of like the scale uh, we are actually looking at. Uh, and moving to the next slide. So a little bit of a context here before I uh, I touch on what is really C360. I think all of us probably would know it's a pretty standard industry technology term, but primarily uh, Intuit used to be a product-based company for last several years. It almost like was a different brand per product, but it has been transformed into a platform company where now we are delivering consistent and uniform ecosystem experiences across different products actually that are powered by one Intuit platform, which is a significant shift. And as you can actually imagine in the platform world, uh, to its core lies the customer identity access management and C360. That's almost like a keys to the kingdom. So today we will focus on customer 360 component of that. So what's really is C360? It's a capability uh, that thousands of, with thousands of data points uh, that define what the customer is and their relationships with Intuit offerings and their customers that truly describe them. And based on like what customers expect from us when they engage with us and then what we know about customers, that really helps us enable Intuit uh, strategy uh, through C360. So it really enables us to provide experiences that demonstrate that we can actually demonstrate to our customers that we know them across all our touch points, not necessarily just the in-product experiences, but like end-to-end -end, customer success, marketing web properties, name any channel. And then that actually helps us like continuously improve the customer conversion, retention, and confidence in our, uh, our offering. So really the uh, pitch here is moving to the next slide, uh, Gautam. Uh, the, uh, the vision that actually we have, which is a pretty bold vision provocation is like, to be that financial identity network powered by the knowledge graph for the fintech industry. That's kind of like what we aspire to be. And the graph essentially indeed is like Intuit's customers or even their customers by establishing the rich connections across customers and actually as you can think in, yeah, like beyond. So to double click a little bit on the financial graph strategy, next slide is uh, there are really three main pillars. Uh, the ownership the customers have like entitlements like their identity resolution which is very important like who they are what they actually say indeed they are 
and then their life cycle at every stage of engagement. So ownership, uh, as you can see, is really about the relationship uh, with Intuit in terms of products, entitlement, subscriptions they have access to and capabilities uh, being like able to really verify customer's digital identity against their real world identity. And if you can actually really figure out uh, on top of it, like what stage of engagement they actually are at. I mean, you can pretty much imagine like knowing through the ML driven insights and learnings and what their intent is. We can really drive the highly personalized and engaging experiences. And that actually we believe will lead to the network effects platform that will deliver the value through the relationships and collaboration. So that's kind of like the overall uh, strategy. So how are we really uh, 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 we're, uh, working on it. Like next slide, please. And then how this is really shaping it up. So in the interest of time, uh, uh, I'll just double click on the very high level architecture. I think this is just one slide, but there is like a infrastructure, uh, people process, technology, product, and even importantly, mindset behind this. Uh, we are in the very early stages of this journey, but really on this diagrams, uh, if you start to think from the left, the capability supports like synchronous and asynchronous modes, streaming pipelines, uh, standard data lake integration at scale. Then we got like attribute and relationship stores with GraphQL APIs. And here really the bigger shift at Intuit is like we have started to treat APIs as uh, really products. And what I mean by that is like real self-service where there are like meetingless collaborations. Uh, developers are able to actually discover APIs, first party, second party, third party. They can adopt on board to them at ease with like within a matter of minutes earlier, you used to take like days and weeks. So as our services journey, we have matured a lot. And then we have an asynchronous mechanism, mechanism to also engage. So uh, customers uh, uh, actually for this infrastructure, you can imagine is like the in-product experiences, customer success channels, marketing properties, and then the scale because of the 150 million plus customers actually that we serve and even their customers, customers, partner enablement. Uh, we are really looking at millions of customers visiting Intuit properties, uh, API concurrency is already hitting like thousands of transactions per second. And uh, importantly, also the Intuit and then the external developers uh, uh, are able to actually adopt and bind to these APIs with ease. This actually in turn enables us to uh, drive hundreds of experiments at scale to deliver the world-class personalized experiences, something that actually we are not able to do this. Uh, so with that overview, let me hand it over to my peer Gautam to walk us through the design patterns for building the customer 360 knowledge graph. Thank you. Thank you, Amit. Uh, I hope all of you can hear me. So maybe like being an engineer at heart, like this is a topic which is very close to like my heart and I have like, you know, worked through kind of a, my industry experience to capture these design patterns to solve for the common problems that we come across day to day, like when we go for designing, architecting, for building a knowledge graph of this massive scale to solve for like, you know, our end customers, right? So typically like these are five design patterns. And to start with, first pattern is about the data movement. Whenever we build a graph, at that time, we have to feed data into that. The data movement has to take place. And in such a scenario, our first reaction is to think in terms of a pipeline. Whereas from the pattern perspective, what I have learned is that to think platform, not pipelines. So why platform? Because platform is a generic kind of a capability that can have reusable and configurable stages for each different kind of a stage. And we can plug and play we can build multiple kind of pipelines just by using those stages again and again, right? Second thing is that in a platform, we build a metadata repository that can be used by multiple like consumers of our platform to discover the data, to attribute the data, right? And as well as to build the trust of our consumers that only the consented data is being provided to the end uh, customers or the specific application. And Another aspect of a platform is that we have uh, operational excellence built into it that rather than like, you know, piece by piece adding into a specific pipeline, we can make economies of scale by creating uh, like dashboarding, monitoring, alerting, those kind of things within the platform. And that way we can have like very much efficiency while doing the data movement at this kind of a scale. 
All right. So data has two states. One is, I mean, data is either moving or it is at rest, right? So one pattern was for the data movement. Now other is when the data is at rest, obviously a question comes, where do we make the data rest? Where, what is the data storage, right? So here again, I have seen multiple times like through my career that discussions happening, which is the right uh, storage uh, technology for the data. For knowledge graph, what I have learned is that it's like a, no like you no know, one kind of a technology that can serve all kind of use cases. So it's good to go for polyglot rather than a monolithic kind of a storage decision. So by polyglot, I mean like normally in programming, we talk about polyglot like Python, Java and all, whereas in data storage polyglot, I refer to that, let's say you have a large amount of attribute data. So the, for that, like which is like a key value pair, you can use a NoSQL database. Uh, like DynamoDB, MongoDB, they are very good for like fast access to large amount of data for a specific entities. Now then there is a need for searchable data, which is only on specific fields. So for that, we can use something like Apache Solar, Elasticsearch. There are plenty of databases which serve this specific purpose, right? Thirdly, like if we have to have relationships, which are like very specific to the large size graphs, for that, it's really good to have a graph database like Tiger Graph or like, you know, these are the good technologies that can be used for having multi-hop queries and getting insights from the graph perspective, like running those graph queries specifically. So this is like not a comprehensive list, like there are more like technologies we can use, but think in terms of polyglot so that we don't try to like, you know, put all of the features into one kind of a data storage, right? That's the pattern uh, we I mean, uh, use it over the time. And as Amit mentioned in the architecture diagram, there were three data uh, like you know, storage we are already using for these different users. But our end customer doesn't come to know that hey, from where the data is coming. Like, so for them, it is like seamless. So moving on, once we have stored the data, we have done the data movement. Now the purpose of the knowledge graph is to provide access of this data to a variety of consumers. They can be developers, data scientists, data analysts, like product managers. So in such a scenario, the pattern is like right for me, not one size fits all. So again here, the immediate reaction for the data access like is that at times uh, we go for a synchronous like a REST API on top of the data platform so that anyone can access it, right? Whereas what we found is that there are other like access patterns that if we provide to the consumers, then it can help us like a very quick adoption of the knowledge graph, as well as like, I mean, scalability of the platform so that overall ecosystem can work like in a, in a very efficient way, rather than like one team, like, you know, doing a bulk of work, getting all the data from the API and then looking for some changes kind of a thing. So I'll show you with some examples. One is that for our knowledge graph, we first built a, pattern of GraphQL API. So GraphQL API is a very generic, most of you might have seen it, where like, let's say we have 6,000 plus attributes, and if they are exposed via GraphQL API, then any consumer of the API can specify the specific attributes and access them, like on their need basis. Now, some of our marketing partners, they were interested more into like the changes to the data, rather than like, you know, getting all the data, I mean, through the API, or filter data through the API, they were more interested into, let's say some celebrity who joins like, you know, one specific organization. So when they join the graph of that organization, now this is a new event that has happened. So this event can be published to a specific topic where our consumers can start listening. And that is the asynchronous pattern through which we start publishing uh, these change data captured messages to our end users. So that is an asynchronous pattern. So after solving both these, we came across another challenge where a lot of new consumers or like uh, customers, they come and they try to onboard our data platform for this knowledge graph. Here, if they start listening to the real time, before that they need kind of a backfill of the data, like what was the historical thing, right? So for that backfill, like the earlier options were to use some kind of a technology from the specific vendor for like backfill. Whereas we realized the pattern is to build like a reusable replay mechanism 
so that backfill can happen from an offline data store and uh, cover consumers or like new clients they can access it by themselves through these historical bootstrap and then once they have done the historical bootstrap the past data they can start listening into the like they have come up to the speed and start listening to the latest data also so that is like three different data access patterns and there are multiple more like you know which are still in the oven kind of a thing and over the time like you know i can share but the key to remember is that data access is right for me not one size fits all like we can't just say that hey we are just have an api use it no we have to solve for the multiple patterns for data access all right moving forward like uh, i hope all of you would agree that uh, ai is like uh, one thing uh, which is uh, seeping into every aspect of our technology right world like right? so there was a time when we were like uh, working with a like monolith then microservices then like big data now is a time when the ai has to be part of every aspect of our knowledge graph now in this aspect how we think from the pattern perspective is that since ai is inevitable it has to be deeply integrated within the graph rather than like bolted on or like as a separate organization right so in this for example like we have feature store so like our features that are required for ai models that can be like created out of the knowledge graph using the attribute store using like uh, the different technologies by which we can create like aggregation as well as like the, uh, the like rich features that can be used ready by the data scientists rather than they doing like all the feature engineering right so that is one part second is that since the knowledge graph is being used for kind of a data modeling there has to be a like feedback loop so that any like ai models results should come back within the same uh, graph so that data scientists and our business partners they can make a decision how a model is performing and based on that they can fine tune the model so that has to be deeply integrated within that ai part and finally like in the ai pipeline all the aspects of ai like whether it's a training optimization and like i mean even training now the trend is more towards auto ml so in in such a scenario all of that has to be we have to think about being in the part of this whole platform and as a various stages rather than like something external which happens outside the platform so then only like we can let's say we have a graph store within that graph store there are capabilities to do the graph ml based uh, like models so that insights can be taken and the model can like start predicting and write on all right so moving on like <clears throat> this is like the last pattern i would like to cover which is on the data entities here uh, the pattern is like more from the user perspective where like uh, we treat data as a product right so whenever we come up with a platform and start serving certain needs uh, for our uh, like business partners there there comes a long list of like feature requests that they want in like on a roadmap in this quarter or like in future kind of a thing and using agile like the favorite option is to take them to the product backlog right and how many of you agree that like product backlog is something like which we look only like once a quarter or like very few times kind of a thing and it's always like you know very difficult to prioritize things uh, rather than the current uh, items which are high priority we are working on it right so in such a sense we can't starve our uh, end customers from this perspective for that purpose the pattern is that to introduce self serve in this whole ecosystem from the beginning itself so when we have self serve there it means like no code or low code kind of engineering where anyone like you know even a product manager data analyst or like your business person they can come they can define like you know relationships attributes within that graph they can run their own like you know models so all of that they can do as a self serve so there is no need to develop specific features only for serving uh, like that specific kind of uh, customers needs so that is one part and other part is that we introduce kind of a inner source where our partner teams they are welcome to contribute to the platform if they need any new feature so using that the whole development gets scaled so that is how like the whole platform gets adopted very fast as well as it becomes like you know scaled up 
so that multiple type of use cases innovations can take place by like different variety of persona so i i find like in myself successful when any like you know business user with like like low technical knowledge they can also come and on board to our knowledge graph to discover the data to like you know run their use case as well as like to propose like a new kind of uh, like uh, experiments they are planning to do for that in a self serve form so so these are the like top five patterns uh, that over the time we have developed and that's what i wanted to share with you yeah i think with that like i think uh, that's all from our side and if you have any questions feel free to like you know put it in the chat and we'll be happy to answer them yeah i have uh, some question okay for let me take some question from rashmi uh, can i have access to the presentation of course like you know there is a link for presentation uh, please feel free to download from there then there is a question from ying uh, on how to efficiently query both the document store and the graph store simultaneously in the runtime yeah so how we are solving this problem is that we have come up with a orchestrator Uh, which is based on GraphQL. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So so we we have like an orchestrator. Using that orchestrator, it can like you know redirect the queries which are coming from the document store as well as from the graph store. So that for the end customer, it is like a consumer of our API. It is seamless. the orchestrator does all the work behind the scenes to pick the data from the document as well as the graph store and to solve for that right yes so, I, i hope that answers the question yeah yeah so my Any question is yeah. around um your low code environment for product managers i'm just wondering how those managers edit or author the data do you, what do you specific ui tools frameworks is it just editing data directly how exactly do you do that right so so for that like uh, we have a home grown like uh, ui and i mean in, within intuit like we have a big uh, ecosystem uh, through that all the services are through a specific common infrastructure from where like we call it like dev portal so using that anyone can access any of these services and through that we expose a ui where the metadata is exposed to all the business users right in the metadata business users can go and they can like you know create like experimental attributes they can make changes in the attributes like but of course we don't allow the editing of the like the end data it's more about the metadata that can be edited whereas the end data comes keep coming from the real time flows so but like that, that metadata is fully like you know repository is a self serve kind of a thing that we have developed right and if i can just like add uh, one point at, at at uber level is uh, there has been a significant shift at intuit in terms of the self service maturity model uh, regardless of the type of the assets it could be services library mobile native libraries desktop ecosystem or data models so as uh, gautam was saying the everything in terms of self service experiences through paved roads uh, is standardized on the dev portal where the developers actually are pretty much uh, get to do most of their stuff like on their own and then the velocities are like top of the world so. all right well let's uh, give an applause hopefully you can hear us virtually uh thank you very much um yeah. gautam i i uh, i thought you were going to be here physically but in half an hour have the panel so hopefully you should, you can join and you can join us uh, virtually for the panel sure 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 i'll be happy to join that right. thank you very much so our next speakers we have them here so sarah and thomas from enterprise knowledge